Hello, this is Dr. Marty Klein with another video quickie. Today I want to talk about some doctors who are my heroes. Periodically, I complain about what doctors don't know about sex or about how they mishandle sexual cases. Today, though, I want to talk about doctors who get it right. They are my heroes. And here are four examples. Number one, doctors who won't prescribe Viagra to just anybody. Every week, I get at least one call from someone referred by their physician, and often the doctor has prescribed an erection drug, and it hasn't helped. Why? Because the patient's problem is that he's half drunk when he has sex, or he's having sex with a near stranger whom he's afraid will judge him, or he's using the withdrawal method of birth control, and he's nervous about getting it perfectly right, which, of course, you need to. Once in a great while, though, I see a new guy with unreliable erections whose doctor won't prescribe him Viagra. The doc says the problem is between my ears, not between my legs, the patient will say. Or the doc says there's nothing wrong with my penis. I need to think about my goals and sex. Ah, these doctors understand that once a young guy starts using Viagra, it's hard for him to stop. If the erection problems are situational, new partner, pressure to conceive, too much pot, and the problem goes away, the guy will credit the drug. And if the problem persists, he'll get even more anxious, which is the last thing that he needs. Getting a guy curious about why his body won't jump through sexual hoops on command is usually the best intervention, and smart doctors know that. Doctor number two, the doctor who challenged a mom who wouldn't vaccinate her kid against HPV. HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection, affecting over 40 million Americans. For most, it's a nuisance to be managed. But according to the CDC, about 46,000 new cases of cancer are connected with it every single year. If you could protect your kids from a cancerous outcome, wouldn't you want to? Sure, but millions of parents won't vaccinate their kid against HPV fearing that this will encourage early sex. I guess the parental fantasy is my 16-year-old refuses sex because she's afraid she'll get cervical cancer when she's 50. If we reduce that fear, she'll jump into bed with her boyfriend now. How clueless is that? My hero is the pediatrician who challenges this mom or dad. This isn't a morality issue. It's a health issue, that doctor says. Cancer doesn't know that some body parts are dirty and some body parts are clean, and people who suffer and die from cervical cancer are just as dead as those who die from lung cancer or liver cancer. Waiting until children are old enough to make their own choice about vaccination isn't good health management because most Americans have sex before they're adults, and by then they may already have picked up the virus. Just like good parents feel obligated to teach their kids to brush their teeth, good parents should feel obligated to vaccinate their kids against HPV, even if it makes the parents squirm a little bit. Well, my third hero doctor is the doctor who discusses birth control with college kids who have pledged abstinence until marriage. Turns out, <laughs> most humans are pretty poor at predicting their own future decision-making. High school and college kids are among the worst at this. Every year, over a million young American adults make abstinence pledges, promising God that they won't have sex until they're legally married. Now, these people, they learn less about contraception than their peers, and they're far less prepared when they do have sex the first time. Unexpectedly, impulsively, when they're manipulated, whatever. Virgins until marriage are more likely to get pregnant and to pick up an STI than their age peers. My hero is the doctor or nurse practitioner who tells college kids that they need to know about birth control just in case. They may encourage an IUD or oral contraceptives to help control periods. They may even suggest a condom. A great doc will move heaven and earth to sex educate a virgin until marriage kid even while the kid rolls their eyes at the pointless information. My fourth hero doctor 
is the doctor who tells women with painful intercourse to stop having intercourse for a while. Millions of women experience pain with intercourse. Their responses vary. Some choose to put up with it. Some let themselves be pressured into more intercourse. Some feel the pain is normal. And some deal with myths like sex after menopause always hurts. Or if my partner's penis is large, sex will hurt no matter what. Some docs urge such women to use lube every time, which is good advice. But more importantly, anyone experiencing pain with intercourse should feel entitled to say no, to interrupt it in the middle, and to focus more on enjoying outer course, oral sex, hand job, vibrator, etc., or, or no sex. And then the person and their partner should have a few honest conversations about what is going on. This is medical care at its finest, empowering patients to take their bodies seriously and to advocate for themselves. Try a glass of wine before sex isn't sexist advice, it's bad medicine. These are the same docs who don't take testicular pain seriously enough either. And to any patient or patient's partner who says outer course isn't real sex, a professional can reply, if you found your girlfriend or boyfriend doing that exact thing with someone else, would you simply say, well, that's not really sex and just ignore it? I hope your doctor is a hero. I hope all your medical professionals, nurse, physical therapist, pharmacist, whomever, are heroes too. If one of them isn't, consider finding one who is. They're out there, I promise. And by the way, I publish a uh, a quickie like this every couple of weeks. So if you like this one, go to the bottom of your screen, click the subscribe button, and you get pinged every time I publish a new one. Thanks a lot. I'm Dr. Marty Klein. Thanks for joining me.